I can hear myself. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing today? Ah! Yeah. Well, hey, let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and stand on our feet and let's get into the celebration. darkness out of shame by the cross you are the truth you are the light you are the way Sing. and I once was fatherless a stranger with no Victoriously, into marvelous light I fly. Out of darkness, out of shame. And by the cross, you are the truth. You are the life. You are the way. My dead heart. Lift my hands and spin around. See the light that I have found. Oh, the marvelous light. The marvelous light. Sin is lost. And sin has lost its power. And death has lost its sin. And from the grave to raise it. Victoriously. To marvel is light I'm burning Out of darkness, out of shame And by the cross you are the truth You are the light One last time, it's a moment To marvel is light I'm burning Out of darkness, out of shame And by the cross you are the truth You are the God, we come here to celebrate, Lord, the, just the new life that we have in you, God, when, when we just open our hearts to you, God, when, 
kind of let those, those walls that we may have put up of hurt or disappointment or confusion. And life can be tough sometimes. God, I know that you have so many different hats that you wear, that you're called the comforter, the deliverer, the provider. Sometimes you're called that strong refuge. And God, I just pray for us as we just end with this uh, last song, that you would open the eyes of our hearts, that you would allow us to see you for who you truly are. If we feel lonely, will you comfort us? If we don't know what true love is, God, unconditional love, will you allow us to be loved? God, we want to see you high and lifted up. We want to be brought to a place where we just sing holy, holy, holy in acknowledgement of how perfect you are. So God, will you just do that? Will you meet us in this place, God? Yeah. 
Thank you. You may be seated. Welcome, everybody, to our baptism celebration. It is so good to have you here. We have a packed house here. And you know what I want to do? I just, I just got to take a picture of this. So, um, in fact, let me ask all of you to stand one more time because I want to take a selfie. And, um, and I want to get all of you in this, okay? So would you all stand up and say hello? Wave hi, everybody. One, two, three. One more. One. Okay, great, thank you. How awesome is this? Well, welcome to South Bay Community Church. You know, our baptism celebrations are, without a doubt, the best thing that we do here. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, you are in for a treat. We're not going to baptize them up here. But we're just going to have them invite all of our candidates to come up, 36 of them today. They're going to come up here, share a little bit about why they want to get baptized. You're going to hear some stories. And then they're going to leave here. We're going to go outside. We set up a swimming pool outside in the backyard of this church. And then we're going to bring them in one at a time, and we're going to dunk them. Now, in case baptism is, is new to you, let me just explain what this is all about. Going back to the time of Jesus, whenever somebody made a commitment to Jesus Christ, made a commitment of faith to God, he, he asked them to go into the waters and get baptized, to be dunked in, in the Jordan River or in the Sea of Galilee. It was just a public declaration of a person's faith in God. And that's what these 36 people right here to my right in the first eight, eight rows here, that's what they want to do. They want to declare today that they've committed their lives to Jesus Christ, that they have made Jesus the Lord of their life, that, that they want to follow God. That's what this is about. This is not about getting religious. It's not about getting weird. This is about saying we want to commit ourselves to God. And in this day and age, i got to tell you, that's the greatest thing that anybody could do. Instead of saying, I want to commit myself to me, I want to make myself this king, I want to make myself, I want to commit myself to money, I want to commit myself to my career, I want to commit myself to climbing the corporate ladder. No, they're, they're saying we want to commit ourselves to God, to follow him with all their hearts. So that's a great thing, isn't it? Don't you think so? Yeah. So um, we're going to start with, with our youngest people. And by the way, we got, we got Pat Riley, who's six foot seven inches tall. And we got little Kiani, who is, who is six years old. And even she said, I want to get baptized. I want to get baptized and tell everybody I love Jesus. And so you're going to see them in just a moment. So we're going to start with our youth. So Pastor James, I want you to lead everyone up here. This is Ethan. He'll start out with Ethan. Everybody come on up here. Give him a big hand. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, uh, as Pastor Gary mentioned, we're starting off kind of with our youth and some college students. I've had the privilege and the honor of being in most of their lives for quite a while. And man, what, what an amazing day to celebrate with them, just their love and their faith in Jesus Christ. And so here, we're going to start with little Ethan right here. This is Ethan, and he wants to share with you someone that has played a significant role in his life of accepting Jesus Christ. So, Ethan, you want to share who that is and why? My mom, because she gave, she gave me my Bible, and she taught me about, about the people who played part in the Bible. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you to all you parents who play such a big role in helping your children discover who Jesus is. And right next to him is her older sister. It's uh, Sophia Alexo. And Sophia, what is one thing you want to do now that you are a Christ follower? I want to put God first more and deepen my relationship with him. Oh, that is awesome, man. That's, that's so incredible. Junior high, and he just, she just wants to put God in front of all other things. And so here, we're going to move right on along. This is Mr. Jonathan Chang. Oh, <laughs> you got a little fan club over there, Jonathan. John, Jonathan, I got a Should I not ask that question right now? No, okay, never mind. Jonathan, what is one thing you want to do now that you are a Christ follower? I want to keep believing in him and spread his word to other people. Wow, awesome. That's awesome. All right, we're going to keep on moving. Oh, who is this lady right here? This is McKenna Inamoto. Everybody give it up for Mac. 
Oh, you got a nice little sign over there, Mac. All right, Mac, what is one thing you want to do now that you are a Christ follower? Uh, I want to reach out to non-believers and share Christ with them so that, you know, one day they can be like me. Oh. Be like you? Oh, oh just, okay, I get it. Just. All right, Mac. All right, this is Jacob Falkenstein. Hello, Jacob. Say hello. All right, Jacob. So who is a significant person that played a part in your accepting Christ and how so? Well, my father helped me accept Christ because he used to read the Bible to me when I was younger. Oh, that's awesome. Again, thank you, parents, just for loving your children and sharing the greatest gift of all, and that's Jesus. And so this next candidate right here, this is Paige Hurdai, and she wants to, woo! She may look nice and innocent on the surface, but she threw a snowball at me once, and I'll never forget that. All right, so Paige. Who is a significant person, besides me, that played a part in your accepting Christ and how so? Um, my dad, he always taught me about how amazing God is and encouraged me in my faith. That is so awesome. Man, I, I just got to tell you as a youth pastor, I'm just so thankful and so encouraged that so many of you parents take the time to really share Jesus Christ with your kids. And you, as you guys can see up here, man, you guys are doing a great job. And so I encourage all you parents, continue to share Christ with your kids. And we're going to be moving on. This is Julianne Lim. Hello, Julianne. All right, Julianne, what is one thing you want to do now that you are a Christ follower? Uh, read the Bible more so I can know more about God and, like, spread the word to other people. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, Mr. Royce. <laughs> Look at his hair, guys. He got ready for this week. All right, Royce. Royce Miyamoto, who is a significant person that has played a part in your accepting of Christ, and how so? Definitely my mom, because whenever I was little, she would always take me, even if I didn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so even though you didn't want to go, she'd still bring you, and it all... And, and I learned about it. Oh, That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Christy Sugimoto, my anime buddy. How are you doing? All right, Christy. What is one thing you want to do now that you are a Christ follower? Well, I want to bring my friends closer to Christ and um, let people know Jesus, like spread his word. Oh, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, our next contestant is Abby Yamamoto. Man, I wish I could have Abby sing for you guys what her, her answer is going to be. Because she has a really awesome voice, but I won't make you do that. So, Abby, who is a significant person that played a part in your accepting of Christ and how so? Um, my older sister, Emily, she really encouraged me to come to church and get involved. And she really inspires me in how much she loves God. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> All right, Mr. Nathan Wild. Hey, you guys might see him occasionally playing the drums up here, just going to town on him. Hey, Nathan. A lot of whistles over there. <laughs> Corianne? Where, okay. Um, <laughs> who is a significant person that has played a part in your accepting of Christ and how so? Um, both of my parents actually played a very significant role in my uh, life with Christ um, because they always supported me and always, you know, kind of pushed me to figure things out on my own, not to necessarily just follow what everybody else is doing. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. And hey, saving the best for last, last but not least. One of our favorite Wongs, Sarah Wong. And Sarah wants, woo! You might see her occasionally doing hula up here. And today she said she was going to do hula and share her testimony. But she said, you know, she decided not to. So she's just going to, she wants to share with you just her story of how she came to know Christ. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are encouraged and inspired by it as well. When I was younger, my relationship with God was always um, off and on. Although I was introduced to South Bay Community Church as a child, my relationship with God never felt personal and committed. Um, when I first started to attend church, I automatically established great friendships with a lot of people. It was fulfilling because church was a whole other environment for me, and I had many people that I looked forward to seeing. A few years later, I started to attend Evolution. My three-year time at Evolution was probably one of the best experiences of my life. I met a diverse group of people, including Pastor Davey and Pastor James, <laughs> who were both wonderful, fun, and always made me feel included. Evolution certainly sparked my feelings towards my walk with God. I remember my first retreat with Evolution and feeling God's presence over me. 
His spirit filled the whole room, and at that moment, I knew when I would get back home, I'd feel a different, I'd feel like a different and changed person. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and my connection with God slowly vanished. I knew deep down inside that I wanted that strong relationship with God, but I could never really find it. As I got older, I felt the same way even when attending Legacy. I would experience a powerful relationship with him, but in a flash, it would go away. This was the worst feeling ever because I always strived to have this enduring connection with God, but I never really understood why it was never effective. I've always wanted to get baptized, but I was always very hesitant towards it. I knew that if I were to take this leap in getting baptized, I had to do it for the right reason. I would constantly tell myself that if my relationship with God was not where I want it to be, then I shouldn't do it. I've always been very fascinated by mission trips and the outcomes you can achieve when experiencing it. I remember being curious about the recent East Asia trip and wanting to see what it was all about, but I never followed through with it. As the news of the upcoming Uganda trip started to come around, I told myself that I was going to take interest in it and see what it was all about. Before I knew it, I was committed to going. This was definitely a big step in my life and in my faith. I never had to take on an enormous amount of responsibility like this, and I always knew that I was not quite where I wanted to be with God yet, which had been something I've had difficult, I've difficulty with my whole life. I was so conflicted about going at this point because half of me wanted to go and the other half of me wa knew it wasn't time yet. I started to pray about this every day, asking God to just help me with this decision. Though all this stress and confusion, I began to feel God's presence over me, telling me where to go and what to do with this situation. At this point, I knew God was leading me in the right path. I could feel him nudging at me and telling me that he knew what was right for me and going to Uganda was not what he planned for me. I can't explain the feelings I had during this moment. It was honestly something I've never ever felt before and in an instant, I knew that he is here with me forever and has a plan for me. I don't know what it is, what that is yet, but I'm excited to find out. God has changed my life immensely. Through the darkest points in my life, I knew that he um, was watching over me and is walking me through them, helping me to learn from them. God's love is unconditional, and how can you not worship his existence? During these times when I feel either distressed or resentful, I go back to one of my favorite verses. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven, Matthew 5, 16. I'm ecstatic about this leap, taking the plunge for God. God is wonderful, and I owe my whole life to him. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sarah. Hey, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, and we hope that you guys grab one of those pr uh, programs as you made your way in. They're filled with all of their testimonies in there, as much as we love to have each of them share with you just their life and how God has really transformed and changed them. Uh, we would be here all day, and so we hope that you guys would be blessed and take those and read them, and maybe you have been a uh, part of walking some of the journey that they have walked through, and maybe hopefully you'll find some encouragement uh, maybe you'll find some uh, support in what you're going through. And man, what a just great day to just celebrate with all these people who just love Jesus and have the rest of their life look for, looking forward to serving him, getting to know him, and sharing his love with other people. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys later in the pool. Good job, guys. Good job. Give five. Oh, there you go. All right. Hey, I want to bring up a second group to the stage. So if uh, you guys would make your way up to the stage. Um, we got 12 more people coming up. Would you guys welcome them up as they come up? <laughs> All right. So. Making their way to the stage. I'm going to start down on this end. And this is a six-year-old Kiani. Kiani, can you say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> this is um, something special here at South Bay Community Church because as most of you guys know, we don't baptize infants here. We believe that uh, baptism is something that the individual does. The, the person who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior on their own. Um, wants to declare their decision. So 
I want you guys to hear from Kiani because uh, some of you guys may be wondering why is she up here? Is she really making this decision? Is this her mommy's doing or is this her decision? And uh, she actually wanted to get baptized a couple baptisms ago after um, being part of that and watching that. She said, I want to get baptized too. And so we told her to hold off a little bit. But um, I want to ask you, Kiani, why, why do you want to get baptized today? Can you tell the church? So everybody knows I believe in Jesus and that he died on the cross for our sins. Amen. Isn't that? <laughs> that is awesome. Now, is this your mommy's decision or is this yours? Mine. Are you sure? Yeah. This is, this is her decision. She wants to follow Jesus and uh, show the world. Thank you, Kiani. Actually, I, I, I got to do this really quick. Come here. Let's go. Come here, Pat. Check this out. Isn't this amazing? Look, stand right here. <laughs> Is this not the body of Christ? And she's like right up to his kneecap right there. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you, Pat. Um, <laughs> bring you out of place. But, Pat, who, who is in your life a significant person who's had an impact on your decision to follow Christ? Well, it was, uh, I was blessed to have uh, two sets of parents, uh, my mom and dad, uh, Hilda and Richard Riley, and Ted and Irene Cedar. And they, Ted and Irene really made an impact on me. Yeah. And it's taken me this long yeah. to show it. <laughs> I'm totally stoked. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Woo! Praise God. Uh, Pat's just, uh, just been an amazing part of our church. He serves on Sundays, uh, part of our first responder team, and just has a heart for the Lord. Uh, believe it or not, he is, are you a basketball player? Yo, okay, there you go. He's a basketball player. The, not the Pat Riley of the Los Angeles Lakers, but uh, <laughs> same thing. Every Pat Riley you saw. Okay. This is, uh, this is Joshua. <laughs> this is Joshua. But I want to ask you the same question. Like, who's a significant person in your life that has played a big role? For me, it's been, um, it's been my mom. Her name is Kay. Um, and she was a single parent, and it was myself and my sister growing up. And she always taught us if we, were, if we would stay rooted in the Lord, he would get us to wherever we need to be. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in the military and always moving around the world, it's because of her and what she planted in me that I really have such a, a zest for the Lord, I'll say. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Uh, this, is, this is Jessica, also goes by Jesse. Uh, but Jesse, I want to ask you, <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Um, in your life, what is one way that God has just really made himself known to you and, and how? Um, a lot through people, a lot through music, a lot through really just being in the word and listening to the Holy Spirit and following that. Okay, yeah, he's everywhere, right? In music, <laughs> through people, praise God. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Some of you guys might recognize Lauren. She's part of our worship team on the weekends, just has a beautiful voice. <laughs> but I want to ask you the same question. What is uh, one way that God has made himself known to you in your life? Definitely just the sense of comfort that I feel and that no matter what I'm going through, I'm, I'm never alone in any situation. So. Mm, amen. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> this is Alan. Alan just has an amazing story um, of things that have happened to him in his life. Uh, suffered a pretty crazy accident many years back when he was hit on the freeway. But I encourage you guys again, please look at your testimony books and read what God has been doing in everybody's life. But if I can ask you one question, I want to ask you, uh, what is one way that God has made himself known to you and has been at work in your life? God has um, made himself known to me by saving me from the bad car accident that I was involved in. Go to a car accident where I was sideswiped on the freeway. But after that, I'm looking in this crowd and I can see everybody is loving and willing and prospering and getting along and knowing and everything. And it's a, it's a real God out there 
is going through us, going through this ministry, bringing us together. So that's what I like to say about that and everything. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Alan is always here with his family members right here in the front row just taking in the word of God. So it's awesome to see that uh, even today he's still worshiping with all his heart, right? Amen. This is uh, Corrine Martinez. Would you guys give it up for Corrine? <laughs> and Corrine, I know you've gone through a lot in your life, but who, who's a uh, person who's played a significant role for you? Um, that would be my mother, Jean, who's here somewhere in the audience. <laughs> Oh, right there. <laughs> oh, okay. I, was, I, I, I thought you were going to talk about me, but uh, okay. No, thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, love this family. I know corinne has gone through a lot. Again, read her testimony. Uh, her mom, who she just mentioned, Jean, just loves on the pastors like crazy. Always gets me Subway gift cards because she heard I like to eat healthy. I hate to eat healthy, but thank you anyway. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is Amisha. And Amisha, if I could ask you a question, who is a significant person um, that's played a big role in your life? My friend Kiara, she um, taught me to devote like a special quiet time each and every day mm -hmm. to um, talk to God, read the Bible, and ever since then I've been like really happy. So Praise I'm happy about that. Yeah, that, that's uh, <laughs> something we want to emphasize to every believer in Jesus Christ, to have that daily quiet time and walk with the Lord in his word and in his scriptures. Thank you, Amisha. Here's a beautiful couple, Jim and Joanne Wilson. <laughs> they are part of one of the most important ministries here at the church, which is our Tuesday night prayer meetings. We invite anybody to come out. And they are just here faithfully praying for you guys, the church, so we thank them. But uh, Joanne, uh, Jim, I'll start with you. Are you sure? No, he's not. I'm not going to allow that. Okay. Jim, what is one way God has made himself known to you? Uh, before church, um, there was a void in our lives for both of us. And um, coming to church helped fill that void. And it just made us a happier and functioning couple. And it's better for our kids and our family. Amen. And over here, Joanne. <laughs> You're not getting away with this. But who, who is a significant person that's Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> who's uh, played a role in your life? Um, my mom. My mom, she, uh, wherever there was a church, we were there. It uh, didn't matter what it was, we, my mom would always take us to church. So mm. thanks to her, um, I came to know Christ. And uh, thanks to you guys, my prayer group, my life group. Uh, who have brought us even closer to God, and we are very blessed to be a part of this church. Thank Amen. you. Praise God. Thank you, God. Thank you. I'm going to bring you up here, okay? If, if we can all take one step back, I'm going to bring David to the center. This is uh, David Bonilla. It's actually his birthday today, so can you guys uh, wish him a happy birthday? So talk about celebration, not only is he celebrating life, he's just celebrating new life in Christ as he gets baptized. But I'm going to ask David to just read his full testimony. If you guys want to follow along, you can in your book or just pay attention to what David has to share from his heart. I think Jim was going to read for me too. <laughs> no, you're not. Go ahead. I, I ask you to be patient with me. Um, I haven't read this in a couple weeks. It's kind of long. And parts of it are kind of tough for me to talk about. I remember sitting in my parents' church as a child, listening to a message in a language I did not understand, and counting the minutes until it was time to leave. I was there because I had to be, not because I wanted to be. I believed in God, I believed God existed because I was told that he did, not because I had a relationship with him. Sitting next to my sister and I were my parents, who I respected because of their strong relationship with God. I was not where they were yet. I was not sure I ever would be. I had no choice then to go to church on Sundays for what it seemed like all day. It wasn't just Sundays either. 
far more often than I would like. It consumed other days of the week. I don't remember if I felt like I was missing out on other things or if I just felt completely bored in something that I did not truly comprehend. I just knew that I would have rather have been at home. As I grew up and went out on my own, I didn't bother attending church regularly. I had a church that I belonged to that I would occasionally attend. But it was far too easy for me to think up excuses to skip out. The times I did go, it was out of guilt because of what, I was, ex what was expected of me, not because I really wanted to be there. I would enjoy the message while I was there, but that message would fade away once I felt the week, once I left and the week progressed. I believed in God and I knew he was there, but I still didn't have a relationship with him. At the time, I didn't even know what a relationship with God meant. I fooled myself into thinking that believing in his, exist in his existence was enough. Despite uh, all of this, God had a plan to open my eyes and my heart to him. He was patient in his plan and wanted me <coughs> wanted to make sure to create that perfect foundation for my relationship with him. Years later, he sent my wife, who even though grew even though grew up in a very different with very different religious beliefs than myself, or <laughs> sorry, grew up with very different religious beliefs as myself, believed in the same ideas that I did. Seeing that my beliefs were rather relaxed, I didn't see any harm in our different backgrounds. After years of making the poor woman wait, <laughs> we were finally married. Little did I know that this was the start of a relationship, not only with the worldly love of my life, but with something even grander. I was never starving. I always had shelter. I was comfortable. Now I had this wonderful partner by my side. I never really... I never really knew any hardship. God was continuing to bless me each and every day. His path for me was unveiling itself. I just didn't see it yet. He was building the foundation for me to seek him out and build a relationship with him, but it would not, it would not be without cost. I had been fortunate thus far, blessed by a God that saw my potential as his child, and like any father, he was desperate for my love. He knew me, and he was desperate for me to know him. It would not be long until my wife and I were struck with tragedy. We lost a member of our family. It was a <laughs> thank you. It was a member that we loved with all our hearts, but we didn't have a chance to meet. We lost our child. We lost our child before we were able to look into the child's eyes for the first time. What made it even tougher for me was I had no idea if I lost a daughter or a son. And I felt robbed of even knowing that. The loss brought us even closer. Thank you. The loss brought us even closer, but made us feel a bit directionless. We didn't know, you really know how to proceed. Things could have fallen apart rapidly from there, but they didn't. Our unity kept us afloat. On the inside, I was broken, carrying with me the pain that will be with me for the rest of my life. I was angry, angry at the world and perhaps at God himself. I wasn't sure what to believe anymore. On the outside, I tried to be strong for her, <coughs> a pillar of strength to lean on when she needed one. What she did not know was that, that foundation, was that the foundation of that pillar was crumbling little by little. I had brought up the idea of attending an Easter service, as we did every year. Soon after, she remembered that there were always Easter services at a local high school that threw, that threw and threw out the idea of attending. We walked from our house on Easter morning to attend a service that was in the gym of this local high school. It turned out to be SBCC. To this day, while I remember that it was Pastor Gary delivering the message, I cannot remember exactly what the message was. What I do remember is how it made me feel. As he passionately delivered his message, the crowd around us faded. He was talking to my wife and I. No one else was there. It was just the three of us, and Pastor Gary was trying to help me understand our loss. The message was impactful, and I felt like someone was trying to reach out to me through it. I can honestly say that I had never felt this way in church before. 
I was moved to tears. Of course, trying to stay strong in front of my wife, I fought back those tears and tried to hide the ones that were able to escape my self-control. We returned home and went on with our lives. However, something had changed. As the week continued, that feeling stuck with me. It was no longer something that was put aside the second I stepped outside those doors. A few weeks later, my wife recommended that we go back, that we go check out this church's regular service. It was taking place at a nearby hotel, which seemed different uh, to me, but, uh, but maybe it was what I needed. I needed different. Wanting to figure things out, I agreed. We checked it out. Then a couple of weeks later, we went back, then more regularly. Many times, that feeling that the message was directed at me and me alone returned. Someone was trying to reach me. We became regular attendees and even started to enjoy this other young Pastor Greg guy. <laughs> uh, in May of 2013, my wife was at the end of her second pregnancy, and we were eagerly anticipating starting our family. Thinking that we were just faces in the crowd, I remember Pastor Gary pulling us aside after a service and saying something like, I've noticed you two come regularly. I remember thinking, oh, great, what did we do? How did we mess this up? We sim he simply asked if he could pray for our unborn baby. We gladly accepted. For two reasons, it was funny that he pulled us aside. I had been wanting to talk to him to perhaps share our story or ask him to pray for us, but I never felt comfortable doing so. Even on the eve of the birth of our child, the past loss was still tough for me to discuss. The second reason is because the next morning my wife went into labor. But there were complications. I began to pray and ask God to watch over us. Surely he would not do this to us again. I prayed my heart out and begged him to just give me my son a fighting chance. Just give me the opportunity to meet him. I reached out to the pastors of our new church, and Pastor Gary immediately replied, Pastor Greg didn't, uh, <laughs> and said that he was praying for us. <laughs> My son, now nearly three years old, overcame the complications and entered our world. Everything had changed from that moment on. Things could, not, things could have gone badly, but they, but they didn't. God had been with us that day. To this day, I cannot look into the eyes of my son without a reminder that he is a gift from God. For the first time in my life, I was beginning to feel his presence in my life. It was a presence just as real as anything physical in my life, more so even. It was then that I started to trust in God's plan. While I may not always understand it, I now trust in it with all my heart. My faith and relationship with the Lord grows each and every day. Here we are nearly three years later with two wonderful sons. Things may not always be perfect, but we are so thankful for our blessings and the plan that the Lord has set forth. His glorious plan has led me to him and his immeasurable love. Each day I promise him and myself that I will never stray again and that I will work to always improve our relationship. I am so thankful to my wife, my children, and SBCC for helping me find my way, for helping me feel his love and for guiding me into his waiting arms. I am thankful to my parents who had a strength in their beliefs that I always envied but never truly understood until now. I needed the Lord to guide me through a tragedy to show me that he has a plan for me. My journey isn't over yet. My journey isn't over, and I still have a very long way to go. But for the first time in my life, I am convinced that I am traveling the right path. What does God's love to mean to me now? There is one part of an SBCC message that still resonates with me to this day. I am not a perfect man. My list of sins may be shorter than some, longer than others. One day we will all stand judgment before the King of Kings and have our sins read out to us one by one. When that is done... And we stand there disheartened by our seemingly endless mistakes of our life. God will turn to us and say, despite this list, I love you and you love me.
I have a relation. I have and have had a relationship with you. Welcome home. To me, that is true love. When that day comes, I will race. <laughs> I will race through those gates and finally greet the child I never got to meet. <laughs> Until that day, I will continue to strengthen my relationship with God. After all, he now watches over and protects that child, which I am eternally grateful for. Until that glorious day, I am trying to pass down what I am learning to my children. My oldest son loves SBCC and loves worship. You have probably seen him dancing to the music at church, usually in the middle of the aisles. Um, <laughs> it is a completely different experience for him than it was for me as a child. He loves to go and doesn't feel forced. He loves to pray and thank Jesus before each meal and at bedtime. His understanding of him is very limited at this point. But with my help, it, it is slowly growing. I ask him, who's Jesus? And he replies, he's a baby. That's probably what he learned in a kid's crew. <laughs> I can't wait to fill him in on the rest and help set his own foundation for a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Thank you, David. This is for you. Would you guys give this whole group of uh, baptism candidates one more hand? There we go. You can help me this way. Yeah. 
All right, we have one more group of uh, baptism candidates coming up to the stage. <laughs> We got a uh, special uh, group coming up. There's a few candidates who are here. Um, you'll hear more about their story. But uh, though a lot of stuff has happened in their life, a lot of health issues, God is still, allow still allowing them to be baptized today. I want to start over here on this end. This is uh, Jeanette Kim. <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> you came to our church this past year and. Now that you're a Christ follower, what is one thing you want to do now with your newfound life in Christ? Um, I want to make sure that I practice what I preach mm -hmm. and um, not just with my words but with my actions, show my love for Christ and just bring him glory in any way that I can. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> Here we have two people. Uh, this is Allison and her, are, are you nine months? Uh, Eight months? Yeah, almost. <laughs> we, we might have two baptisms in the poll today. Um, this is uh, Allison. And Allison, uh, who is a significant person in your life that's played a big role for your, your faith? Um, back in college, my mom had uh, opened her home and allowed a room to be rented. And a tenant came in. Her name was Becca, Becca Tautala. And uh, every morning and every night, she would read the Bible. I was like, what are you reading? So I'd go in, and she taught me a lot. Mm. It taught me a lot about daily habits and what you should do daily to better yourself. And because of her, uh, I've built a habit just to seek daily, no matter what. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. <laughs> this here is Gail. This is Gail Lee. She's uh, been coming to our church for a few months now, right? Gail. <laughs> All right. Got a fan club back there. Gail, who is a significant person in your life um, that's um, that played a role for your salvation? Well, earlier growing up when I was, it was uh, my family, but then later on it was my uh, husband who showed me about God's grace and then introduced me to his church. Awesome. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Mike, her husband, the one who's shouting back there. <laughs> this right here is Eric. Um, Eric, I want to ask you this. What is one thing, um, now that you're a Christ follower, what is one thing you want to do now as, as a follower of Christ? Well, this is not my first rodeo. I was uh, infant baptized. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was uh, brought up in a very loving uh, Lutheran family, and my parents are both great role models to me. And now that uh, I have a family of my own, uh, I think this uh, – Second adult baptism, it's a way to recommit my life to Christ and become the best example I can be to my own beautiful twin girls, Amy and Lindsay, back there. All right. Thank you, Eric. They need good leadership, so thank you for that. This is Ellen Ozima right here. And Ellen, what is one thing you want to do now that you are a follower of Christ? Well, of course, you know, I'm a senior citizen, so I trusted my way. It wasn't the way. And something was missing, so I've accepted Jesus Christ again and put my trust in his plan for me, Thanks. whatever that may be. Following after Christ, trusting in him. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> this is Allie, Allie Pilataxi. And uh, <laughs> is that how you say it? Yeah. All right, got it. This is Allie. And Allie, um, what is one thing you want to do now that you're a Christ follower? Um, just be bold. We... Uh, committed our son in December, mm -hmm. and one of those things I wanted for him was to be bold. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Amen. <laughs> I want to be bold for my son as an example, so he can be. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we dedicated Ali and Chris's son not too long ago, and we don't do infant baptisms here, but we do dedicate children to the Lord as a family, um, as an immediate family, and as a church family, so. Thank you, Alan. Well, right here is Madison. And uh, Madison, if I could ask you. Thank you. Madison, who is a significant person who's played a role in your life? Um, my beautiful, amazing mother right here. And then my best friend, Kate, who's right over there. Um, they kind of just taught me that, you know, no matter what struggle you're going through, like, 
to be with God. And one of my very first um, services here was when you were preaching about hallelujah anyways at your church retreat, and it really stuck with me. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Madison. <laughs> As she mentioned, this is her mother, Nia, uh, short for Virginia. Oh, let me give you a tissue right there. And uh, Nia, if I can ask you, um, what is one way God has been making himself known to you in your life? Um, God has demonstrated a lot of unfathomable miracles in my life. But the biggest one was when Maddie experienced near drowning, near drowning experience where she was picked up from the pool, already purple and very, very cold. And all I could remember was asking the paramedic that if I can hold her close to me, just even for a split second, I prayed to God to give her a chance to get to know him, the love that he has shown me so much, just even an opportunity that he would take me for her. And she came out only with an ear infection, and now she's standing here with me. And Amen. she she invited me. She's she's such a beautiful, loving girl, and um, she invited me to come here last year. And I made that commitment to come to the Lord even stronger and deeper, and be more intimate with Him because I know the gifts he had shown me is far greater than what life really has shown me. Amen. So I'm so grateful I'm, I'm here with my daughter. Praise God for that. <laughs> Just God's grace that as a child you were able to come out of the water and have life. And today is a, another demonstration of you coming out of the water and having a newfound eternal life in Christ. So we thank you so much for, for sharing your story. Here, here is Arthur. And Arthur, uh, you guys will notice later on because of some health issues, um, he won't be able to climb into the pool, but he still has a heart. And he's still able to give his life to Christ and receive Christ as his Lord and Savior. So we will be pouring water over him instead of dunking him. But uh, he has made Jesus Christ his Lord and Savior. And so I want to ask you, Arthur, what is one way God has made himself known to you in your life? I think um, I haven't been worrying about things. And I know God has a plan for me. Like he had a sermon about how you have a plan that goes, uh, have a plan that goes straight. And yeah. the God's plan is going up and down. That, that's that's the way it's been, so. Yeah, God's plan is always yeah. better, yeah. even uh -huh. though it's not yeah. always ours. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you, Arthur. Give it up for Arthur. I'm going to jump over here to Dwayne, um, and then we're going to get to Scott and Sylvia in a second. But are you sure you want to stand? Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm pretty excited to be here today. Oh, praise God. And, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. All right. You, you guys are very encouraging. Thank you, Arthur. Arthur, is, uh, he came here in a wheelchair, but he insisted, I want to be on stage, and I want to stand, and I want to share my heart for Jesus. And we told him, you know, we, we could sprinkle you too and pour water over your head. He says, no, I'm getting in that pool. I'm getting in that pool, even if I have to bag up my legs. So <laughs> your wish is our command. So. Dwayne, if I can ask you, who is a significant person in your life that's been, been a big factor in your salvation? Well, I have really good friends, yeah. and they, they su supported me and got me started to come to this church. Yeah. And that's Jessica and Kevin and little Hayden there. Yeah. But um, <laughs> my, my parents had me, my sister and I, we were required to go to church every Sunday, but they said we could pick any church we wanted. So I, I bounced around. I went to a lot of churches as I was growing up. Not until as I got older, I just turned 60 April 11th, and uh, thank you, uh, did I find this church. 
and I'm very impressed with the friendships I've made and the lessons that I learned. The first sermon you ever gave me, you'd notice I didn't fall asleep on that one. <laughs> uh, I, I always enjoyed coming to church, but um, my mother had an awful lot to do with my, my believing in the Lord. I quit going to church as I became a motorcycle rider and chasing girls and, you know, just high school good stuff. And But my mother made sure, okay, I went to church this Sunday. I want you to sit down and you're going to listen. Yeah. So my mother is the, wor the most important reason in my life for getting baptized. She passed away in 1999, but I'm going to see some tears of joy from her today. That's right. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope you guys are getting this theme. Uh, parents, mothers, fathers, you guys play a huge role in your children's life, your example and your words, okay? So I hope you guys are taking that to heart. Uh, this is our last couple. This is Sylvia and her husband, Scott Croson. I want to ask you, Sylvia, as I come over here, um, what is one thing you want to do now that you are a Christ follower? I want to grow stronger in my faith so that I can build a solid Christian foundation for my children, Cameron and Connor. Amen. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. And I'm going to have Scott come over here. This is going to be our last testimony for today, and I've asked Scott if he would just read his uh, entire testimony. My story starts with a longtime friend, Chris, who's here today, who I'd known since the start of high school. He would often ask me, Hey, do you want to go to church? And if you ever want to go, let me know. I always said no thanks. Over 10 years later in the year 2004, Chris asked me again. This time out of curiosity, I said yes. The church that Chris brought me to was South Bay Community Church. I remember being a little uncomfortable once there because I had never been to church before. However, shortly after we arrived, I began to feel more relaxed. Everyone at the church was friendly and welcoming and never once did I feel that I was being pressured to attend. Thus, on my own, I would, I, uh, on my own wheel, I continued to go with Chris. It became a routine. We would go to church and grab some lunch after. I began to learn and grow in Christ. I really enjoyed the sermons and re the relaxed atmosphere here at SBCC um, and began to feel like I belonged. I was even more reassured after meeting my wife, who had been first a Catholic and then a Christian her whole life, but was still looking for the right church. I introduced her to SBCC, and after the first Sunday there, she turned to me and said that this was the church I was looking for. <clears throat> Everything I was learning about Christ was interesting, but I didn't feel that Christ was really a part of my life until 2009. <clears throat> that year, I lost my dad and my brother two days apart from two different types of cancer. <clears throat> I found myself praying and asking for answers. Um, one of the services I remember Pastor Gary saying that if anybody wants Jesus to be a part of one's life, then ask Jesus to come into your life and pray these words with him. I repeated every word that Pastor Gary said and something changed inside of me. I felt a little hope, a little more alive. I've continued to learn more about Christ since then and have continued to become stronger and more whole. As a Christ follower, I'm comforted in knowing that however long or short <clears throat> our lives here on earth, there's more. We have the opportunity to go to heaven. I accept Christ in my life and I'm so grateful to know that when it's my time to leave this earth, I will have the chance to be reunited with my brother and my dad again. Thank you. Thank you. Would you guys give one more round of applause to all these candidates and we'll see you guys out back. We uh, just have a few more moments in this worship center, and then we will be heading out to the back, and that portion shouldn't take too long. We're just going to uh, baptize everybody in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I, I just want to take two minutes just to share with you a little something that's so important. I, I remember when I was in college, and uh, one of my friends 
at UC Irvine. She was only 20 years old, and she passed away. Um, as a 20-year-old, I begged, I begged God for her life before she passed. And then when she passed, I remember I was at her funeral. I don't know if you guys have ever been at a funeral, but she's laying there in the casket, and I was begging God with my whole life. I was just, with everything I had, just, God, please bring her back to life. Just desperately crying to God. And as I'm standing there at the casket and I see her laying there, I'm just praying, God, please, just, just let her just come up out of that casket and just walk right out. Give her life again. I remember just thinking, God, this would be the most amazing thing. You would get so much glory and so much honor. Just, just let her just come out of that casket. Well, she didn't come out of that casket. I wonder if any of you guys have ever seen anything like that before. A dead body just rising out of the casket. Well, it's happened. It's happened. I heard this story of an army chaplain during the Gulf War. Remember that way back in the 90s? The Gulf War there in the Middle East. There was an army chaplain. And he was there in the Middle East with this, uh, with this troop. And he was there to be their spiritual guide. And to tell them about Jesus and the hope they have. He was supposed to be a pastor to them. And one of the soldiers actually came to the chaplain and he said, Chaplain, I, I believe. I believe Jesus died for me and he rose again. I want to give my life to Christ. Chaplain was like, that's awesome. Praise God. And he, the soldier says, well, I want to get baptized because I believe I want to get baptized. And there they are in Kuwait. There aren't any bathtubs lying around full of water. They're in the middle of the desert. I mean, there's, there, there are no bodies of water around them to get baptized. So you know what the chaplain does? He goes and gets one of these makeshift coffins that they had. Just in case anything ever happened to these soldiers, they had makeshift coffins. He puts it, he gathers all the, the, the troop, all the fellow soldiers, and he has them gather around. And he takes that young man who decided to follow Jesus. He says, I want you to climb into that casket. So that soldier climbs into the casket, not knowing what in the world's going on. He says, lay down. So he laid, lays down, and then the chaplain shuts the casket on him, and in a brief moment opens it back up. And he says, rise, get out of that casket. And he gets back up and he climbs right out. They didn't have water around, but what, what was going on was this soldier was demonstrating and expressing to his fellow soldiers what has happened in his life. I believe that Jesus has died and he has rose again. He has risen to forgive me of my sins and to give me new life. And because Jesus has died and he has risen from the dead, so I too die to my old life, my old life of sin and all the things I used to live in. And today I rise because I have a new life in Christ. See, what he understood was what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that he sins. Just like every single one of you, you sin. We all sin. And in chapter 6, verse 23, it says, for the wages of our sin is death. We will all die not just physically but spiritually because of our sin. But the, the, but the gift of God is eternal life. That if anybody believes in him, we too will rise to new life. And not just life here on earth, but life eternally. The Bible says later on in chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you believe Jesus is Lord and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe that he rose from the dead, the Bible says that you will be saved. That chaplain didn't have water if he had water he would have baptized him because it's the same idea but he wanted to demonstrate that in Christ just like Christ died and rose we too can die to our old life and rise to spiritual life and what you got amen brother and as we go out to the back right now what you're about to witness are 36 people who made that same decision and when you see them going down into the water I want you to picture them going down into the grave or if you will going down into that casket but rising right away to new life they're cleansed and they're purified because of what Christ has done that doesn't mean they're not sinners anymore we're all sinners still all the pastors at this church are sinners pastor Gary your senior pastor is the senior sinner here at the church we're all sinners, but every single day we have the Spirit of God living in us, His Holy Spirit making us new. And each day, we're, as we follow Him, we're looking more and more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our character, in our decisions, in our actions. And so you are here today to witness people get baptized, to 
declare to you that they have new life. You might have come as a guest, but maybe you didn't have any idea that maybe you would walk out of here with new life. I want to give you that opportunity right now because the Bible says if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose from the grave, you believe that with your heart and you declare him as Lord, you too will be saved. You too can have new life. So I want to give everybody an opportunity to do that right now. If you guys would bow your heads with me as we close in prayer. Again, maybe you came in as a guest. You came here just as a witness. But based on what you just heard, the Bible says if you believe, you too will have new life. And I'm going to pray a prayer. And I want to invite you, if that's you, to just pray this with me in your heart and express to God that you believe that Jesus died for you and rose from the dead for you. In fact, if that's you, I want to ask you right now where you are, would you just raise your hand and say, Jesus, I want to believe that you died for me. And that you rose to new life. And I too want to have new life. Would you just raise your hand where you are? Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. In the back, praise God. Anybody else? I see you. 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 Praise God. I see you in the back. I see you too. And for all those I didn't see, it's okay because God sees. And he's the one who really needs to see your heart and your expression of faith. So would you just pray this in your heart with me? You don't have to pray it out loud, but just mean it and talk to God right now. God, thank you so much that even though I'm a sinner, that I can be forgiven today. Thank you for just revealing to me briefly that Jesus Christ died for me and rose again so that I can too rise to new life and I can have eternal spiritual life with you. God, I know there's so much more that I need to learn and understand. But I want to start right here and say, I believe. Now help me from this day forward to learn more about you. To find out what, what Jesus has done. To find out more about what it looks like to follow after you. We love you. Thank you for new life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you guys help me welcome those who raise their hands to the kingdom of God. If you raise your hand today, you're getting baptized. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, make sure you guys pick up a new life packet as you leave. Leanne's in the back. She has these packets called new life packets with a Bible and some information on how you can walk in this new new life with Christ. She'll, she'll have those for you. Those are free. Um, we're going to close in a worship song. Then we're going to ask you guys to head out to the back. All right. Let's praise and worship. <laughs>